السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وحبيبنا وإمامنا محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all his companions We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless his entire household and to bless every single one of us to protect us, to keep us steadfast upon this deen, to bless our children, our offspring, and to keep them too upon the deen. My brothers and sisters in Islam, a few minutes ago we heard beautiful verses of the Qur'an being rendered in Salah. And I have decided because of the meaning of these verses and their appropriateness to us as Muslimin, the youth in particular, but the Muslimin in general, I have chosen to translate some of these verses in order for them to be understood in a way that at least can move the heart. Many of us, mashallah, we do listen to messages and we listen to many of the messages, many lectures, mashallah, we perhaps recite the Quran a lot, but does it have an impact on us? Sometimes we're too busy in our lives doing so many different things that our minds are engaged and preoccupied in such a way that we don't realize that the message that has just come across is so powerful but it slipped through our fingers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us in so many ways that in our midst we have so many of those who have sacrificed their time, effort, energies, learning the deen, trying their best to put it into practice and disseminate it to others, teach it to others. Yet, we find ourselves sometimes so busy in our lives, we haven't had time to benefit from those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept right next door to us. May Allah make us use those who are very near to us to learn the deed. My brothers and sisters, Jannah was described. We're talking here of Surah Qaf. And after that, Jahannam was made mention of. Jannah here referring to paradise. Then Jahannam was made mention of and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of a very powerful verse. يَوْمَ نَقُولُ لِجَهَنَّمَ هَلْ انْتَلَأْتِ وَتَقُولُ هَلْ مِنْ مَزِيدٍ On that day, Jahannam will be addressed. On that day, we will ask Jahannam or Hellfire a question. Allah says, Jahannam will be asked, Are you full yet? And Jahannam will respond to say, Is there anyone who is going to still come? Which means there is space. There is still space. May Allah protect us from Jahannam. You know when there is a fire, just to put you into the picture or to bring it closer to your mind, and you take big logs, and you know I'm sure a lot of us in this part of the world enjoy our brides, mashallah. Saturday night braai, we could have been there, but mashallah we are here. So we enjoy the braais. What happens, you find the logs that are being put into the fire in such a way that they go above the drum. Have you noticed? The half a drum that you have, the logs go above it. And you start the fire at five o'clock, yet you're only going to start roasting at about seven or eight. The professionals know what I'm talking about. Especially when you're doing it the proper way. They say there is an asal way of doing it the proper way. That's the proper way. You get the real logs and you put them in five o'clock, half five, you already set everything up, it's burning. So many logs that it's well above. And you know that by seven o'clock there is going to be so much space in that drum because the fire by nature eats up the log. So Jahannam, if you take a moment just to think of it, one may perceive it to be full, yet things are being burnt in it. Hence the question, are you full? And Jahannam says, no, bring, bring more. Is there anyone else to come? May Allah save God us from it. The Prophet used to pause for a moment and ask Allah's protection from the fire. Whenever there were verses of Jannah, he paused for a moment and asked Allah to grant him that. Or goodness, ask Allah to grant him or his ummah. And whenever there were verses of uh, adab or punishment or verses of this nature, he would stop for a, for a moment and ask Allah's protection. So much so that the Quran that we use, this 13 line Quran that we have, 
on the side of some of the verses where the Prophet ﷺ almost always stopped, you'll find a black star. And it will tell you the little dua that was made by the Prophet ﷺ or some form of a sunnah dua that is there that is to be recited. Sometimes we don't know the meaning of it, so we just read it. It would be interesting to look into its meaning. It rejuvenates the iman. It protects us. It grants us so much of goodness. It develops a link with Allah. You're asking Allah something when He is talking about something. At that moment, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from Jahannam. Now, Obviously, when we talk of Jahannam and hellfire and the burning in the fire, man is made in a way that if you are to give him too many warnings, it might lead him away from the path. For example, a man comes to work every day, he's trying hard to come on time, and you know, you do not acknowledge the fact that this person used to come at the half eight, although work starts at eight o'clock, now he's coming at 10 past eight, nine minutes past eight, eight minutes past eight. What's happening? Is he improving or is he becoming worse? He's improving. So if you do not acknowledge the improvement, a day might come when you say this boss of mine, he doesn't even realize that I'm making such a big effort. I've actually achieved so much. You know what? I'm just wasting my time. I'd rather just come back again at half past eight. So this is the nature of man. We like to acknowledgement. When you're trying, there should be acknowledgement. When your children try, acknowledge them. When you try, you'd like someone to say, hey, mashallah, this person is trying, especially if it's to do with the workplace, even in marriages. You find a marriage on the rocks, they say. Mashallah, you know, before we used to say on the rocks, meaning it's very bad. We went to Cape Town, we found one of the best places to have fish. They say it's fish on the rocks. I say, what does that mean? Then they explain to me, you go with the wrong woman there, your marriage is on the rocks. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. May He make us from those who understand the lessons of the way Allah has addressed us. Such a beautiful way. Get back to my point. When a marriage is almost breaking and then we happen to have arbitrations and so on and the two decide that okay, we're going to give it a go. May Allah make that, inshallah. For all those who are struggling and suffering, give it a go by the help of Allah and be serious about it. You know when you say I'm going to give it a go, there is a challenge. You have to try hard. You have to ignore petties. You know, we're going to talk about it this evening, inshallah. Whenever there are petty items that affect us, we become people who lose contentment. These petty issues, throw them out. Do not have the space in your heart or mind for petties. Whether it is in your social life or the bigger picture. Minor small matters, we don't really have space for them. Let them pass and ignore them with a smile. And carry on, there are major issues that you and I need to deal with in our lives. May Allah grant us Jannah. May Allah protect us from Jahannam. So, when there is acknowledgement from both parties to say, my husband is trying, subhanAllah. May Allah help us to give up our bad habits. A lot of the times, good marriages are breaking because of a bad habit or two. So, if the wife is acknowledging my husband is trying, although he has not achieved, by the help of Allah, you will feel encouraged. You feel that, you know what, mashallah, she's acknowledging it. And the same applies if the wife is trying and you say, you know what, she might have had so many weaknesses, but mashallah, she is trying. In that particular case, she feels acknowledged and she feels like she wants to try more by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is something unique that Allah has given it to us in such a beautiful way that amazingly, Allah describes Jahannam and every time He does so, He quickly makes mention of how easy it is to access paradise. Allahu Akbar. Allah talks of Jahannam and the punishment and He quickly makes mention of how easy it is to access paradise. But there are certain conditions. So these verses, Allah says, وَأُزْلِفَتِ الْجَنَّةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ غَيْرَ بَعِيدٍ After He spoke about this question to Jahannam, the question to Hellfire, He says, and paradise or the garden as it is translated or Jannah as you want to look at it, Jannah will be brought close, close, to whom? It's brought close, close meaning, mashallah, it's nearby, it's not too far, it's near. Jannah will be brought, brought close, lil muttaqin, for those who have taqwa. Now one might say, oh, that's a word, it's a big word. Taqwa meaning the consciousness of Allah, that's the simplest translation of the word. But if you take a look at the deeper translation of that word, it is... To worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way 
that you create a barrier between you and the fire of Allah. So the same fire that is being made mention of, the word taqwa is actually derived from a certain root which has a word wiqaya that comes from it, which means to create a barrier. So to create a barrier between you and the wrath of Allah, the punishment of Allah, in a way that you would fulfill His commands and stay away from His prohibitions as best as you can. And remember to engage in tawbah and to ask Allah's forgiveness, because that too creates a big barrier between you or me and the fire of Jahannam. May Allah protect us from it. That's why we just said, may Allah protect us from it. So, Allah says, for the muttaqeen, Jannah is not far, it's not difficult, it's not impossible. In fact, it is brought close to them, غير بعيد. Again, Allah says, it is not very far, it's not very far. Jannah is there. Now, I pause for a moment and I just want to remember what I said during Jumu'ah yesterday. I made mention of a point for my own benefit and for that of all those who are listening and who were listening. To say, what is your aim in life? What is your aim in life? A question I need to ask myself and you need to ask yourself and you need the answer and you need the right answer because there's no room to make a mistake. Life comes once. Cannot make a mistake. Why am I here? You are here to prepare for paradise. Finish. It's over. There's no other answer. I'm here for Jannah. I'm here to prepare for the day I will meet my maker who put me here in the first place. Do not lose focus upon that. The minute we lose focus, it's like a driver driving at 240 kilometers an hour and he turns to look at the animals on the left. Why? Someone said, what a beautiful gazelle. And he's driving at such a high speed and he looks at the side. What would happen? What a fool. May Allah protect us. I don't think we would do that. Do you know, even mobile phones, I was sitting in one lecture of one alim and he said it is haram to answer your phone whilst you are driving unless you have a hands-free kit and we're sitting and looking where did this fatwa come from <laughs> where did this fatwa come from haven't you heard of multitasking but the reality is if you look at how many accidents have taken place because of people trying to answer the phone especially what's happening during the driving subhanallah people have died because of that Go and see statistics, then you realize, and I'm sure it's happened to all of us, it's happened to me as well, where you're trying to fumble with your phone and you quickly have to break because you realize, hey, you know what, I nearly knocked into the guy in front of me. That word nearly will actually turn one day to, you know what, I knocked into the guy in front of me. Allahu Akbar. So stop, prevention is better than cure. So going back to what we are saying here, in this dunya, it rotates and it moves so fast. That if we stop to look at the beauty of the world and to look at that which is out of our focus and it's not supposed to be in our focus, we will bump into something so big that we wonder whether we will ever get to that Jannah. It is through the mercy of Allah that He will grant us that Jannah. So regain focus. Come back onto that focus point. I want paradise. Everything I do must be towards paradise. Allah will give me in that paradise whatever I want. Let's listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. هذا ما توعدون لكل أواب حفيظ. What a beautiful verse. Allah says, "This is what we promised, or was promised to who? This is what was promised. What was promised? The Jannah that has been brought close. It has been promised to those Awab. Awab is a person who returns in repentance to Allah so often. Number one." So Allah is promising Jannah to certain people and the first quality He says, He says those who constantly repent to me. It means you may have made a mistake, you are human, you might have faulted, you might have committed sin. But Allah says, we count how many times you've turned to us, whether or not you've actually turned back to us and how often that was. This is why I go back to Muhammad wasallam's life. And you will find that every day he used to engage in tawbah up to a hundred times. Tawbah. Not like us where we just offer a lip service to a tasbih and it's over. We said a hundred times I did it, I fulfilled the sunnah. The sunnah is something large. It has the highest level of sincerity. It has the highest level of connection with Allah. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa really meant what he said with us who engage in istighfar without even thinking of what we are saying. Forget about meaning what you say. 
So this is why it's about time we refocus. When we say Astaghfirullah, tell yourself Allah says an awwab, a person who is oft repenting to Allah, is going to be granted paradise. Ya Allah, I'm saying, oh Allah, forgive me. It means I need to admit my sin. I've committed so many sins. Those which I know, those which I don't know. Ya Allah, grant me such goodness that through your mercy you forgive me so that I can earn the Jannah. Because Allah does not need the deeds you and I engage in. But through His mercy, looking at the condition of the heart, He grants you Jannah. He says, this person, his link with me was so solid. Whenever he faltered, he came back to me. This is why Muhammad wasallam says, if your good deed makes you happy, and I'm sure it happens to all of us. You know when you come early for Salatul Fajr, you get up early and you're so, you make your wudu and you read your adhkar as you're reading the whole, you come into the masjid and you've heard a beautiful recitation and you come out from Salatul Fajr, how good do you feel? You feel really good. Especially if you've got up a little bit earlier for the Hajj, just between you and Allah. Just between you and Allah. And you got up and you cried to Allah, you made whether it was two or four rakaat or eight or more, Whatever it was, the fact that you did a good deed, doesn't it make you happy deep within? It means you're a mu'min, it means you're a believer, it means you have a link with Allah, so thank Allah and build on the link. And the same applies if you do a bad deed, and inside it makes you regret at some stage to say, you know what? Yeah, what I did just now was bad. This, I shouldn't have gazed in that direction, I shouldn't have run in that direction, I shouldn't have committed this adultery that I just did, astaghfirullah. That feeling within you is the first step to Tawbah. It shows that Allah loves you. It shows that I'm going to turn to Allah because look, I did not like what I did. It did not make me feel good in any way. Why? Because I have an answerability to my maker. So that's why I'm not feeling good. But if you are just a freelancer, an atheist person who doesn't believe in anything, he will do the thing once and plan the next one and the third one and the fourth. And even when he grows old, he's not even bothered. Because why? To him, it's just a pastime and an amusement. So a sign of Iman. A sign of belief, you do a bad deed, the person has a drug, may Allah save our children from it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all and our offspring. And then a person says, you know, I shouldn't have done this. That's a good sign. Let's work on it. Let's grab that feeling from you. My brothers and sisters, we all go through similar matters. You know, you sit and watch me sitting in front of you here. And I sit and I look at you, subhanallah, you are my brothers in Islam. And the reality is, I don't know what you are going through, you don't know what I am going through, but I am here to encourage you to live your life in a way that you become closer to Allah, you have some hope, because there is only the hope that is going to drive us to Jannah. If you don't have hope and you think, you know what, that's it, why, why are you sitting here? Because Allah is the most, the one whom we have the most hope in, and that is the true hope. Allahu Akbar. So, you don't know the mess I may be in, meaning I go through difficulties and issues. And I don't know the mess you might be in, and you might be in something huge and large, but we make dua for one another. We reach out to one another. That is a part of Iman. Someone is sick, they're going through a big mess. They're going through turmoil. Some people who are so sick start questioning their Iman. May Allah never do that to us. But it requires a visit or two from you and I to that person to just boost that Iman once again. I'm not alone. Like they say sometimes, all the people, all that people need to hear from you. It's just a reassurance, three words. Not I love you, no, 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 those are cheap words. Those are very cheap, those need to be proven. But, you know what the words are? I am here, that's all. I am here. Why am I here? Allah is the one who is always here. But we need to understand, when you tell someone who is in deep trouble, you know what, I am here. It means I am going to support you as best as I can, within the capacity Allah has given me, morally, spiritually, I'll make dua for you, I'll try and reach out to you, and it gets to a level where, even if it means financial means, sometimes people will reach out to you, I am here, don't worry, we will bail you out, by the help of Allah. How do you feel? Your iman is rejuvenated because... Allah has sent someone to you in order to solve your mess, but it's Allah who was solving it and He just used the means. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. This is why you make dua, you turn to Allah. You make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The point I want to drive home is when Allah says Jannah is for an awwab, it has been prepared, paradise is prepared for those who turn in repentance to Allah often. It means it is for those whom, who may have sinned and they turn to Allah, for them also there is Jannah. That's what you need to know.
So if you have done something bad, don't think, hey, Jannah is out of reach, it's over. You know, you see the latest S-Class and they start telling you these things are more expensive than the Porsches and everything else, you know. And you start thinking, hey, this is the car of the age. This is the car of the age. And you start working towards it. A day will come when you can afford it. I hope the rank doesn't crash any further, by the way. But for us, we're ready to work towards a motor vehicle. What about Jannah? You might be suffering a loss. Don't ever think it is out of reach. No. But don't ever think that you're too big and you're going to get it on your own. No, it's the mercy of Allah. It's the mercy of Allah. And the mercy of Allah makes you hopeful. Such that when you die, you die with a smile. Tell me, how many people have you seen who passed away? And when you look at their faces, they actually have a real smile on the face. Subhanallah. A real smile. As though you're looking at the face, this person is happy to be dead. Subhanallah. It's happened where you see faces of people who are so calm, they relax. And if you ask people what type of a life they led, they may not have had any, anything much in terms of this worldly materialistic life or the items of the dunya. But they would have had some form of a link with Allah that was outstanding. Some form of a link. Whether this way or that way, something was outstanding. So let us be from the awwabin, from those who oft depend to Allah, those who turn often to Allah. Let's promise daily basis engage in tawbah. You know, when I walked in here, the topic I had in mind was how to return to Allah. That was the topic. And when I heard the verses, I said, what better way? Allah is telling us, here's the verses. How do you return to Allah? Step number one, ask Allah's forgiveness. Keep on asking Him for forgiveness. Ya Allah, I did this wrong. Sit and think of what you've done wrong. Ask Allah's forgiveness. Do not delay tawbah. Do not delay tawbah. Ask Allah's forgiveness. The Prophet ﷺ used to make a dua. And he used to say, I seek desperate help of your mercy. Bi rahmatika Istighatha is like when you're in desperation and you're asking Allah's help. You know, this is like the last straw. This is the thing I desperately need. I, I'm seeking your help so urgently. Your mercy I want. Aslihli shakni kulla. Make good for me all my matters. Everything I'm doing in life, make it good, make it pure, make it acceptable, Ya Allah. Wala takilni ila nafsi tawfatain. And don't leave me on, to my own, to myself, even for a split second. You be with me, Ya Allah. What a powerful dua. So that brings me to stage number two. You repent to Allah, you make dua. You know what is stage number three? The most powerful stage. Become regular with salah. That's your starting point. You want to link with Allah? Become regular with your prayer, with your salah, five times a day. Not four, not three, five. Five. Become regular with your prayer. It is the start of your beautiful story with Allah. It is the start of your relationship with your maker, your Allah. And you know what? If when you have read your five salah, start working on the quality. Every one of us needs help with salah. No matter how religious you may think you are, you need help with your salah. Do you know why? It never stops. It's a beautiful love story between you and Allah. I started, so I started from four, I got to five. Mashallah, we, we, we at five, alhamdulillah, five salah a day. That's the right figure. Now I need to do what? Take your time when you read your salah. That's the next step. Don't rush. Anyone who rushes, they still have room for improvement. A lot of room for improvement. So, no matter, it happens to all of us. If you can walk into the masjid and forget about the world whilst you're in the masjid, now you're talking business. Now it's your love story with Allah. Now let's see. So you say Allahu Akbar and your concentration, it brings about inner contentment when you can cut out everything else when you are in salah. That is, then you need to build your concentration in salah. Take your time, build your concentration, then look into the meanings of what you are saying and concentrate on them. So many of us say, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la, Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim, all our lives. We still don't know what it means, subhanallah. And if we know, we haven't thought about it when we were in Rukur, a lot of us are just getting done with the fact that we need to say thrice. And as soon as it's done, we're up again. So, did you read your salah? Yes, I did. Did you do Rukur properly? Yes. How many times did you say, subhanallah, rabbi al-azim? Well, I said it thrice, isn't it? I had to, isn't it? Okay, and then you got up. 
Did you concentrate? Did you think of what it means? Do you know that that's a love story with Allah? When Allah tells you and I, the closest you can ever get to me, who wants to be close to Allah? We all, we all do. The closest you can ever get to me is in the condition of sajda, prostration. And you know what? I am guilty of darting through my sajda in such a way that it's like an insult to Allah rather than ibadah, an act of worship. Why? Because I just went in and I came out as soon as I could. But Allah says, that's the closest. The closest akrabu ma yakunun abdu li rabbihi wa huwa sajidun. The closest that a slave of Allah is to his Rabb is when he is in sajda. That's why I say take your time. But stage number three. You want to, how do I turn to Allah? That's how you turn to Allah. You repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You fulfill your salah. Salah on time. And Allah says, those who oft turn to me. Awwabin hafif. You know what's the meaning of hafif? One who protects. Protects what? Protects so many things. Primarily you link with Allah. The covenant you have with Allah. The promise you have with Allah. So many of us say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah or abduhu wa rasuluhu. We utter the shahada. We utter the beautiful words. La ilaha illallah. Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We say we are Muslim. We say we love Allah. All these words are actually a declaration. Of what? It's a declaration of faith. Your faith. I believe. I believe what? I believe in this whole book. What's the book? The whole Quran. The Quran leads you to the whole Sunnah. So I believe in the Quran. I believe in the Sunnah. Who brought it to us? Subhanallah. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we say we love him, but do you know what happens as a result? It just stops at our mouth. So Allah says, Hafiz here would mean those who protect their promise to Allah. When I said Allah is the one who made me, I worship him alone, then worship him alone. Turn to him. When he tells you you're supposed to be at salah, run to salah. Why do we want to change that? We want happiness, we want help. Allah says, okay, it's all in my hands. So will you come for salah? The Mu'addin is calling out, come to success. I'm looking for success, but I'm not bothered to answer that call. I'm looking for success. My, my business is going wrong. My memory is failing me. My family is breaking into pieces. So many things are happening. I'm looking for a spouse. But when the caller is calling, Allah's caller is calling, come to success. They say, no, that one can't be bothered. I got to go to work. So, Hafiz means one who protects his duty unto Allah. Protect himself from haram. So every time there is haram to be done, and we are human beings, sometimes we may falter and fall. Remember, turn to Allah and then protect yourself once again. This is the meaning of Awwab and Hafib. And Allah is using these two to describe those who are going to go to Jannah to give me a new hope to say, hang on, you might have done wrong. Come back. Come, we're waiting. You come back, paradise is yours. You try your best to protect your promise to Allah, paradise is yours. May Allah grant us Jannah. It's very serious. You know, sometimes when you're healthy and young, you don't think of it as, as you would when you're a little bit older and you start numbing by your knees and arthritis starts affecting you and then you're told you're going to have a bypass and then you start making all these big, big du'as and so on and it becomes a bit more serious. Why? Because you know, I was born, I was put into the dunya, beautifully put in Surah Al-Mu'minun where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, a beautiful way. He speaks about how he's created man, that we created him this stage, the next stage, the next stage, the next stage. And after he says, after that he says, then we cause him to die. So Allah says, we made him, then we cause him to die. Then we will resurrect him again. So if you look at the books of Tafsir, some of them would explain to you that after you're born and you, you came into this life, the next stage is to go back out of this life, into the, the ruh once again separates from the body. Subhanallah. So I would be foolish if I came in here thinking, you know what, I'm going to last forever because it's going to go away. If not today, tomorrow. But it's going to go. So I need to prepare by doing what? Awwabin Hafiz. Turn back to Allah. Come back. Come to the path. Allahu Akbar. So many examples come to mind. You know, nowadays you have GPS on your systems. You just punch in where you want to go, it takes you through a path. It takes you through a path. If you decide you're going to choose a different path, it reminds you and keeps on irritating you and keeps on reminding you. You have one of two options. Either you listen to it or you switch it off. 
If you switch it off, you're lost. Unless you know the path. SubhanAllah. And if you don't switch it off, it's going to irritate you until you get to your destination. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us someone in our lives who can keep on irritating us until we get to paradise. When your parents remind you, when your the ulama remind you, when your when those nearby would remind you and tap you, remember, don't be irritated by it. They are telling you something good. If they are telling you to develop yourself, don't get upset because if you get irritated by someone who's guiding you to the real destination, then you are at a big loss. And this brings me to point number four, how to turn to Allah. We spoke about salah. You know what's point number four? Change your company totally to good company. Without that point, you have no chance. When I say no, I mean no, zero. It's over. Don't think what I'm saying is just a joke or it's light. If you have had a life of sin and you have turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have repented to Him warm tears and you have made an effort to regularize your salah without changing your company, you're going to go back to square one at some stage very soon. You have to change your company unless that company has had the same warm tears as you and you've all come together with the same resolutions and conclusions. Then fine. And this is why we say, you know, those who chill out on a Saturday evening, where are you chilling out? Ask yourself a real question, where are you chilling out? Is it the right place? Islam does not prohibit fun. Have fun, no problem. But let it be clean fun. Subhanallah, clean fun. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. You know, back at home, I come from Zimbabwe. Recently, some of the youngsters were going drag racing. When I say drag racing, I'm talking of proper, uh, you know, with the helmets and everything racing at the uh, circuit itself. There is a circuit where they race. So you take your car and what they do is they soup up their vehicles, they buy the Subaru, apparently it's the fastest pickup, you know, quicker than any other car you could ever have. So the Subaru, they soup it up, mashallah, very well, they put up all the latest of the stuff. I don't know exactly how much money is spent on it. And next thing, there is a timer. In two minutes, how far will you go? So there is a race and what they do is they immediately put down their, their, their foot flat and they carry on. So someone asked me, can we do it? You know, someone said it's haram and this and that. And I thought to myself, you know what, knowing what the youth are up to today, we need to put a line between what is clean and what is dirty. So step number one, that is not dirty fun. You're just racing. I'd rather my child spend his time you know, going on a Saturday afternoon, perhaps with me as well, for a two or two hours or three hours and saying, you know what, we're going racing with these cars. And perhaps put his foot down completely and enjoy the fun. Come back with me, back home. And we talk about it for the rest of the week. Subhanallah. Not as the main point. No. What, what I am saying is, it is a, a point of helping for those who are facing real life pressures of getting into the nightclubs and into the drugs and into the opposite sex and into so many other dirty things and gambling and what have you, all that I've just mentioned now is dirty. When it comes to clean fun, it's something that perhaps one might categorize as a waste of time when he gets close to Allah a little bit more on his own. he said, say, you know what, that's a waste of time. But it's a starting point in the sense that it has got you out of that dirty trouble that you were in before. So this brings me to the next point. Change your means of what you would term entertainment to start with. And inshallah, a time will come when what will be entertaining will be that which draws you closer to Allah and not just a waste of time. I hope you understand the difference. Let me, let me make it clear for those who might not understand. There are three levels. One is that which is forbidden and it's a waste of time. One is that which is a waste of time. You're neither gaining Islamically anything, nor are you actually losing. And the third is when you are gaining Islamically and it's not a waste of time. So for those who are on the lowest level, for them to get up to the slightly higher level, we would recommend it. I would recommend it. I would tell you, my brother, you know what? If there are youngsters who really had a kick out of the clubs and so many different things, I would tell them, hey, do me a favor. Let's go drag racing. He said, hey, are you crazy? I said, no, no, come, let's go. I'll race you. I swear I'll beat you. 
and you take the guy on and you beat the guy. What happens? The youngster's back with you. Hey, the, the minimum you've done is you've got someone, you know, you've got the good company going, you've got something halal to talk about, you're not talking about women, you're not talking about drugs, you're not talking about gambling, you're, not, you're talking about something that is actually perhaps a waste of time if you look at it deeply, but it's better than the dirty fun that people were having. You hear somebody dragging around the corner here? <laughs> so, the truth is, this is one level, it's one step. And why I say this is because when people want to turn to Allah, youngsters have come to me, tell me, you know what, life is so boring, man. You know what, it's so boring, I just, I can't. So say, look, you know what to do? Your company needs to change. The things that make you happy need to change. Don't let haram things make you happy. It needs to change. In fact, there will come a stage, my beloved brothers and sisters, when, and wallahi, this is a fact, Every time you abstain from sin, it gives you a kick. You feel so happy, man. Hey, mashallah, I survived it, man. You know what? There was something haram. I was about to fall into it. Subhanallah. I thank Allah for creating such a big barrier between me and this thing here. Subhanallah. And you get happy. So that's a higher level, very high level. But where do you start? You start off with all these promises. Let's go to these verses and you know, continue with these beautiful verses. Allah says, Awwa bin Hafid. So who is an Awwa bin Hafid? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then takes you up to another level. And he says, Man khashiya ar-Rahman bil ghaybi wa jaa bi qalbin munib. Whoever fears Allah in the unseen. Nobody's watching you, but you fear Allah. This is the level I was talking about. There comes to a stage, my brothers and sisters, when even if you're on your own, there is nothing blocking you from sinning. Nothing blocking you from the little bit of laziness. But still, you get up, you fulfill your salah, you abstain from sin because you're saying, Ya Hayyu, Ya Qayyum, Bi Rahmatika Asabi. You are asking Allah to help you. Ya Allah, don't leave me alone, even for one split second. Wallahi, if you make that dua with sincerity, Allah will not leave you alone. He won't leave you alone. Keep on saying, لا تكلني إلى نفسي طرفة عين. Don't leave me to myself, O oh Allah, even for a split second. Repeat that dua through the day, thinking of what you're saying. And I promise you, He won't leave you. Every time you're thinking of something bad, your mind will go back to the dua. And you say, Ya Allah, you with me? I'm not going to do this. And you get so happy with Him. You're happy with who? You don't want to. You know, to show off to someone is actually shirk. But to show off to Allah is actually an ibadah. Have you thought of it? When you're so happy, I say, Allah, I did it. Who are you talking to? I'm talking to my nation, man. SubhanAllah, that's another level. It's a beautiful level. You're talking to your maker, hey, Allah, you know what's going on here. You know, there's so much of pressure here. So much of fitna here. Hey, Allah, you know what? I did it through your help. لا تكلني إلى نفسي طرفة عين Amazing. What a beautiful feeling. So Allah says, مَنْ خَشِيَ الرَّحْمَانَ بِالْغَيْبِ Whoever fears Allah in the unseen وَجَاءَ بِقَلْبِ مُنِيبِ And comes with a repented heart. So on the, day of, on the day of judgment, do you know what will happen? If you just, if you look at this verse, you will understand that the hearts are looked at. So I'm going to come with my heart, you're going to come with your heart, everybody's going to come with their hearts. How exactly? Allah knows best. But Allah says, whoever comes with a heart that has turned to Allah, munib, inaba means to return to Allah, one who has turned to Allah. So a heart that has turned to Allah, that's the winning heart. I want to bring that heart to Allah. So again, Allah is drawing our attention to the fact that if you've made mistakes, you've, you know, dilly dallied on the path, wait. Turn to me and keep upon that good path from now on and bring the heart that was turned to the right path. Don't bring a heart that then went away the other side. This is why Allah says, لَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Do not die except in the condition of submission. Why? Because that means your heart had returned to Allah. Your heart was with Allah. So if I bring a heart and it is turned to Allah, successful. May Allah grant that to us. May He grant us death with Iman. May He make the best deeds of ours the last deeds. The Prophet ﷺ used to say, Allahumma ja'al khayra ayyamina wa khiraha wa khayra a'malina khawatimaha. Oh Allah, make the best of our days, the last days. 
Oh Allah, make the best of our deeds, the last deeds. That's a powerful dua. That's why we said one of the ways of turning back to Allah is to ask Allah some of these duas and say, Ya Allah, make, make me better. Make me better and work towards it. So if your last deeds are the best of your deeds, successful. Very successful. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, These people will be told, Udukhunuha bi salamin dhalika yawmul khunud. Enter into paradise with peace, with contentment, with ease. Why? This is the day of the everlasting entry. You enter into here now, never come out. You will go into Jannah, anyone who enters Jannah is not going to come out. There's no exit, it's one way. Just go inside, finish. Forever, may Allah grant us that entry. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, what will they get once they enter Jannah? Those who turn to Allah, may Allah make us from amongst them. And like I said, we've mentioned a few of the pointers, how important it is, the company you have, so many, the habits we have, we need to work on them. We need to work on them hard. We say return to Allah. Every time you eradicate a bad habit of yours, Allah replaces that bad habit with an inner contentment and a link with Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Link with Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you want this link, you need to work hard on your bad habits. Eradicate them. And for that, you will have to have good company. And the best company is that of the ulama. Get goodness out of it. You see, every person has weaknesses. And these weaknesses, we do not want to take the weaknesses from someone else. But rather, take the strengths. And they may benefit from a few of your strengths. Don't think that there is a person who has got no strengths whatsoever. There are good points in every individual. It's just sometimes we have not developed them. So develop the goodness in you. And eradicate the bad. Learn. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all benefit from those who are around us and may he make us of benefit to those who are around us as well. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَهُمْ مَا يَشَاءُونَ فِيهَا وَلَدَيْنَا مَزِيدٍ For them will be whatever they want in it. They will get anything they desire at that time. Whatever you want, you will have. There will come a time when Allah will ask the individuals, may He ask it to us, may we be from amongst those. You have been promised to be getting whatever you wanted. Do you have whatever you want? And we will say, yes. Ya Allah, we have what we want. Were you given what you were promised? Yes. Then Allah says, وَلَدَيْنَا مَزِيدٍ We have even more to give you now. You have what you want? Yes, I do. Imagine, you know, a lot of people, and I like to clarify this because it's very interesting. A lot of people sit in the dunya and start saying, when I go to Jannah, I'm going to want this, I'm going to want that. I'm, inshallah, I'll get this in Jannah, I'll get that in Jannah, I'll get this in Jannah. Two things they forget. One is to work towards getting to Jannah. And people argue and debate. You know, they argue and debate sometimes. I know especially when there's a bit of crisis in the marriage and they come and tell you, but I don't want to be with him in Jannah. You know? And you start thinking, you know what, it's besides the point, work towards getting there. But then they say, but if he's going to be there, why must I work towards getting there? <laughs> may Allah save God. It's tough. I hope we don't have that type of relationships. And if we do, may Allah make us the better of people and the best of people to resolve it. Imagine someone is actually saying, I don't want to be with you in the Akhirah. Not at all. Astaghfirullah. We have to be really cruel for that to happen. May Allah protect us from that type of behavior. But getting back to the point, so the sister needs to be told, or the brother, or any one of us who's wishing for anything in Jannah, that you need to work towards getting there, and you need to believe that Allah said, whatever you want, in it, you'll get it. He didn't say, decide from now, draw up your list, and then when you get there, we'll bring your list from the dunya, and then you'll get what you wanted whilst you're in the world. No. He says, you, in paradise, you get what you want. So get there first, you're going to have a different mind, which is a mind complete, you know. You're going to have a different body, which is a body that is complete, the height of perfection. You're going to have a whole different system. Who knows, you might see the guy and say, Ya Allah, but I know in the dunya I said I don't want to be with him, but hey, this guy, I need to be with him now. 
What if that happens? Then you just change your mind. So that's why, take it easy. Take it easy. Jannah is too beautiful for us to really understand. It's only been made such that the description is brought so that we can have a slight understanding roughly of what's there. But still it's extremely far from what we'll ever understand. You need to first get there with the mind of Jannah, the body of Jannah, everything of Jannah. Then we'll talk business. Whilst we are there, you will have a totally different outlook. Remember that. Totally different. So don't start, you know, uh, investing in things that will not sell when you get to the market across the road. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. And Allah says here that we will give them whatever they want. And once they declare that yes, now we have what we want and what we wanted, we will say, now we have something more to offer you. Imagine Allah is giving us. The Mufassirin make mention, even the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa makes mention of looking at Allah. Allah. He says that's a gift that Allah will give those of Jannah, looking at him. And he used to say, oh Allah, grant us the sweetness of looking at you, ya Allah. Imagine, you know, it's, we cannot describe this. But we do know it's going to happen. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised it. Don't we want it? Well, we need to change our lives. How do we change our lives? We've just spoken about it for half an hour. Subhanallah. I want to end off by telling you one thing. One verse that is just after the next verse that I read now. Allah says, Inna fi dhalika la dhikra li man kana lahu qalb. Indeed, in whatever we've just mentioned now, there is a reminder for he who has a heart. In order for these verses to affect you, and in order for this type of reminder to be of an impact to you, you need a heart. If you don't have a heart, no reminder. You will hear it, you go away, it hasn't done anything to you. So Allah says, Inna fi dhalik, indeed in that, in these verses, in these reminders, in this description, there is a reminder for who? لِمَنْ كَانَ لَهُ قَلْبٌ For he who has a heart. A heart of what? A, a good heart. You need to have a pure heart. In my heart I must take of malice. I must take of jealousy. I must take out hatred. I must love my believing men and women who are around me. I must fight my nuts and I must make sure that I struggle to purify the heart of mine. That is when the reminder will be of benefit to me. This is why I always tell people, you want to sit in a lecture? Without a heart, you're wasting your time. Any lecture will be of a powerful impact to you on condition that you have a heart. And there is another thing that Allah makes mention of. <laughs> and you need a second quality. What is the second quality? You need to lend an ear whilst being present. You know what that means? Concentrate. Listen attentively. That's what it means. Listen carefully. So you want a reminder, you want to be reminded. My brothers and sisters, one of the most powerful verses that Allah is describing to you, how you will be able to benefit from the reminders. He tells you, you need a certain quality. What are those qualities? Two things, the heart we spoke about and total concentration. Not just an ear, he says, al qasama the one who lends his ear. Or who are shaheed, whilst he is present there completely, he is witnessing his witness. So if I speak to you or anyone speaks to you, for that speech to have an impact upon you, you need to listen with concentration and you need to have a heart. You know, people when they want to achieve things in this world, if I tell you, brother, I guarantee you, you can get a million grand in 30 minutes. There's just a way of doing it. You know how much you concentrate? You know why? Because you know, hey, there's something coming. And if, and if I want to add salt to that, I tell you, you see these 30 guys, ask them, they all got the million. <laughs> Once I say that, I've given you everything, they're all nodding their heads. <laughs> say, now listen to me. You know how you will listen? I just told you that for you is paradise. Do you know, even for me, I want the same thing. Obviously, I'm talking here. 
And Allah is saying, well, you want that paradise. Just concentrate and have a good heart. You get it. Subhanallah. So purify your heart. I, for one, I struggle with my own heart in a way that I don't allow hatred to reside in it, even for a split moment. No matter what. No matter. Anyone can say whatever they want and try and do whatever. No problem. I have something bigger I'm aiming for. What is it? Just gender. I, I don't want any second thing. Nothing else. You know they say, pull the, pull the what? Pull the rug from under your feet. You slip down. No. If gender is your focus, you don't slip. It's your focus. You have something. You need a heart. You need a good heart. This is why the ulama, look at Mawlana Yunus rahmatullahi alayhi. He spent his life doing what? Trying to tell people, cleanse your heart. That was the message. That was the message the whole, of, the, of his whole life. Clean your heart. Whatever he said, go back. I listened to a lot of his talks. Go back. Now there's a greater impact of the talks. He'll say, clean your heart. May Allah change our hearts to make them clean. Because here is the message. We spoke about how to change. And we've incorporated in it these beautiful verses of Jannah, coincidentally read by the Imam of Isha, Salat al Isha today. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us at the end, He says, In fi Indeed, in that, there is a reminder, but only for those who have a heart. The one who has a heart and he lends an ear whilst being attentive, he wants to benefit. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness. May He grant us Jannah. Aqulu ma tasma'oon. Astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhanallah bihamdi. Subhanakallahum wa bihamdi. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa natubu